Hey guys, so Cal Val here. You are listening to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. Welcome everybody to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. This is our NXT review show. I'm your host, Andy Burrows, and as always, I'm joined by my illustrious co-host, Mr. Adam Cousins. Adam, how are you, my friend? I'm good. I've just eaten my dinner after Oh, the nice. Review. Oh, yeah. What a, what a start to the podcast. We should, be, start. Listen, we should, should, should make be... that Patreon. That should be Patreon only. Do, Patreon, you want to see, do you want to see Adam Cousins eating his dinner? Then pay us $4.99 right. a month. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting lessons from Brewski Blanche from uh, Carnage in oh. doing food. And, okay. uh, I, 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 we've started then, so I'll ask, what, what are you eating? Well, I finished. It was oh, a yeah. homemade butter chicken. Oh, okay. Well, well done. Did Blanche teach Both you how did... to make? Did Blanche no, teach you how to make that? He is a chef. He's no day job. So, uh, but it's on my Instagram. So, anyone like a bit of food porn, go on to at Adam Arsky eighty four on Instagram, and you will see my wonderful creation of oh, butter chicken. How did he ever get a girlfriend? Anyway, Adam, we're here to. Uh, yeah, yeah, mate, no. <laughs> and, oh, we love Rachel. Where's my wrestling wife? Um, apparently there was a war this week uh, on Tuesday night. If you unless you've been living under a rock for the last God knows how long, NXT and AEW Dynamite went head to head. Um, obviously we're here and sitting here chatting NXT. You've done the AEW Dynamite, so if you want to hear the reaction to the Dynamite side of it, go and check out Adam's review, which is just dropped on our YouTube channel and audio. Um, but let's talk NXT and this Tuesday night. We're quote unquote war. It's finally done. The 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 Tuesday night, the one week Tuesday night war is done. Uh, you've obviously uh, we've watched both shows. You've done Dynamite. We've done NXT. Let's just get this out of the way at the beginning. In your opinion, did anyone win the war? Because in my view, wrestling fans won the war because you could just watch fucking unlimited wrestling on a Tuesday night, which was fantastic. Yep. But in my view, wrestling won the war. Yeah. Some of the fans are ridiculous. We're stupid. Um, other people are stupid. This person said this. This person said that. Tony Khan has made a complete dickhead of himself. I'll say that much. Uh, yeah, some of his tweets. You're like, I mean, dude, man, people are just watching your pro. You put out a good product on Tuesday night. Just enjoy that. I saw he's been putting some tweets out about Cena and the Undertaker not being on WWE TV for X amount. It's, dude, stop worrying about yeah. you know going on Twitter and stuff like that. And it's just, it is pathetic. It is. That's the good thing. What you haven't seen any, you don't see Triple H jumping on social media or like in any of the, I'm not going to say Vince McMahon because he's definitely not allowed to do social media. Um, but we'll say like Stephanie or Triple H or anyone else that involved, Bruce Pritchard, anyone of that ilk in WWE putting that stupid tweet. He was doing it during the show, apparently. And you're like, dude, you put out a really, really, really good product this week. Just, you know, enjoy that and enjoy the success that Dynamite have had. And they probably had a few more eyes on the product this week that they don't normally have. Um, yeah. NXT won in the ratings, but you know, it probably always was going to happen since you advertise fucking John Cena and the Undertaker and, you know, Cody Rose, et cetera, et cetera. But AEW done really well this week. It was a good yeah. show. It was a solid show for, for like, you're right. So Tony can't keep, he's literally been on Twitter every day since Tuesday making some comment about ratings or about this person, about that dude, just enjoy what you've done. You've done a great job this week. Your guys, your, your team, your wrestlers have put out an amazing show this week. How about you just concentrate on them? And like, um, but again, I always quote like bully Ray said, keep putting that kind of content out. Now you've set like a benchmark. We said it after the Wembley stadium show, that's the benchmark for that. And it fucking dropped way down after Wembley stadium. Tuesday night, if, if you need something like a, a rival with NXT to it, ignite you, no pun intended, um, then, well, it's it's done a job because people will probably tune in next Wednesday or they'll tune in on Friday or Saturday to Collision thinking, oh, I wouldn't mind seeing what's happening now with Edge yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so it, it don't, don't just keep, yeah, just stay off social media, mate. But the whole Tuesday night war thing, uh, I th what did you make of NXT? It was a good, solid opening, I thought. Uh, what a way to open the show. Oh, I love the NXT. I love the NXT. But I've, I've been loving it without the the big guys in it as well, without the Cody's, the Cena's. Last few weeks and months, it's really come on back to what we've known to love about NXT rather than the crap they put on 
when Nick Khan and Vincent Mann kind of took it over, 2.0 or whatever it's called. No, it was all- um, this week, you know, the last, I say, the last week or months have been great. You know, this week could just add the added bit of nostalgia and added bit of star power just because of this, you know, stupid war thing. But uh, it actually started with, uh, whoa, Cody Rose. No yeah. good that shit. Um, he wanted some announcements. We guessed at least one of those announcements. Yes, we did. We got the um, the Dusty Roads uh, tag team classic, tag team classic coming up, yep. and then obviously we had the men's breakout tournament. The men's will follow the women's, off. which will be yeah, interesting. Yeah. And then the third one, which really to me was he's general manager for the night <laughs> on, on, on uh, NXT, which then brought out Dominic. Oh no, first it brought out Elijah Dragonoff, the uh, uh-huh. NXT uh, heavyweight champion, and he was just about to talk to. Uh, we started off about started to talk to him. And on cap, Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Dirty Dom. And I thought they were going to do title for title at one point. At this I point. did, to be fair, yeah. But they didn't. Uh, they said that uh, Dragonov will defend his title. And Cody Rose made the match. Um, it's going to be, Co- it's going to be uh, Dragonov versus um, Dominic for the NXT Heavyweight Championship, um, which is fine. Uh, at that point, we saw Cena arrive at the Performance Center. That was a, that was a theme of the night. Um, then they said that they're in Halloween Havoc, it's going to be Shotzi Blackheart and Scarlet Bordeaux hosting night one. Of Again, uh, hosted well, last year, didn't they? Well, the Morris, no, Shotzi did. Shotzi hosted last year. More yeah. Scarlet, we can see the best, mm. uh, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, so I don't mind that. Um, I wonder why. I wonder why that is. Yeah. Uh, Oscar versus Roxanne Perez started off with this. Shotzi was on commentary for someone. She was. Yeah. Other than just to, you know, Tell her that she did it. Uh, what a great women's match to start the show. <clears throat> WWE's women game, like we said when we done our Raw review this week, uh, has really upped. And like I said on the Raw review, I think NXT has played a big part in that. Uh, it's got more exp- – I think WWE have been very sensible recently. They've used the products that they've got. They've probably seen, all oh, right, we haven't put many women's matches on here. And they've used NXT and that NXT has led into Raw. Some of the Raw stuff's a little bit led into SmackDown. What a way to open a show, though. Really, really good match. Um, solid, solid opening. Again, got what we want from an opening match. Uh, yeah, I absolutely loved it, mate. I thought it was tremendous. I thought it was absolutely great. Great showcase women's wrestling. Oscar. Good ending. Good ending, yeah. Yeah, and still undefeated in NXT. I know, right? Still the streak. The streak. The streak <laughs> continues. Uh, Brock Lesnar's going to break that. There's going to be a guy in the front row just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Got to watch on YouTube. Sorry if you if you haven't yeah. seen when the Undertaker streak ends, put it on YouTube. You'll know exactly. Yeah. Um, Tegan Knox was backstage. Okay, after Raw, uh, she was telling Valkyra that her title match needs to wait, and Valkyra was like, "Nope, Halloween Havoc is the biggest night of my career, and she's not having anyone get in her way." So Valkyra against Becky Lynch, uh, night one, I think of Halloween. Night Havoc. one, yep. Um, we had a pub match after this. <sighs> Let me text. Let me text. I got from that from friends that watched it. Going, Andy, this what it's like in a pub in England. I was like, yeah. well, it depends where you go, but um... yeah, it depends if you go to these places. But it was a brawling brutes uh, and Tyler Bate versus Gallus in a, in a pub rules match. I, I just thought it was just like a Viking rules match. It was a fucking carnage absolute clusterfuck. <laughs> yeah, absolute clusterfuck. Fuck. There was yeah, there was darts being put in people's hands. You were going through tables. There was bowling balls. I haven't been to many pubs where there's bowling balls. I will say that. I mean, many places Hollywood I drink in. Okay, I need to maybe you know go to Hollywood Bowl. But yeah, there was bowling balls. It was just absolute carnage. And it went on for a good 20 odd minutes as well. They gave it some time. Uh, really good ending, really good match. NXT was on absolute fire this week, and that was just another banger. Oh, yeah, I, I thought it was a fun, as I said, a fun clusterfuck. Here, here, there, and everywhere. As you said, bowling balls, trash cans, tables, darts, the lot. Uh, it was a triple powerbomb uh, a la The Shield uh, mm. that won the Old match school. for the Brawling Brutes, the Brawling Brutes, and Brawling Tyler Brutes. Bate. Yeah, Brutes, Brutes. Um, then they went backstage. Cody Rhodes uh, runs into the locker room where the family... Tony D'Angelo and Stack. I fucking love them too. I think mean, they're great. Um, so basically, they Stack suggests there should be a tag team battle royal, and the winner of that will fight them for the NXT tag team titles on night one of uh, Halloween Havoc. Rose loves it, and he calls it the butter bing, butter boom. No ins- no thing to Enzo or Cass on that. Battle royal uh, next week. I- I'm going to find that a bit of fun, to be quite honest with you. I'm looking forward to that match next week. 
Yeah, I, I like the way that WWE are doing this right now. They've got this serious stuff going on, and then they kind of, I mean, we spoke about on Raw about how it's maybe going a little bit too with these execs getting their own way and wrestling's kind of losing its identity, Raw moving nights, et cetera, et cetera. But NXT are kind of doing it right right now. They're giving, there's a bit of fun. There's that old like throwback nostalgia to these like fun matches that are going on. And then there's some serious hard hitting wrestling going on. I think next week, I think it'll be brilliant. You know, you've got the over the top and then obviously you've got the last two teams in a traditional tag team uh, match. And the, yeah, the winner gets a shot at Halloween Havoc. But again, I, yeah, I, th- I thought it was really good. I don't know. I'm not sure he's going to go over in that. It's going to be interesting who they're going to put to win that. But again, yeah, another, another really, really great point of NXT. Yeah, loved it. Loved it. Can't can't wait. And then they uh they took on John Cena come out for his first NXT Never. appearance since a little while. I think he was the NXT once when he was a champion for three thousand years, uh, at some point. Mm. Uh he come out and cut a promo, Braun Breaker come out, interrupted, they go into a little scuffle. Cena went to give him an attitude adjustment, pretty much said he needed an attitude adjustment, went to give him it and he scurried out of the ring. Corbin started talking, and in little while as he's finishing, you heard the words L.A. Knight, and, and we forgot to mention that Cody Rose did say that the uh, special referee for Dominic Mysterio versus Eli Dragunov was going to be L.A. Knight, and that sets up, and actually, uh, Dominic Mysterio improves every single week. This was one of his, well up there with one of his best matches. I mean, Eli Dragunov's fantastic as well, but what a great match that was. <clears throat> Incredible, mate. I'm really impressed with Dominic Mysterio. Um, what he's the, 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 he's come on leaps and bounds, and yeah. as a heel, it was perfect for him. You know, when he first started, he was under his dad's wing. I get it. He was learning. You could still see he was learning the business. He was learning the nuances of how to become a not just a wrestler, but a, a persona. You know, a, a, an in ring character. That he's now taken that to the next show. He's got to be one of the most hated heels in wrestling right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think they've played this perfectly with Dominic Mysterio and, and you're going to get longevity out of this and yeah. had an absolute great match on NXT. That's the, And that's the other thing about Dominic Mysterio. He's putting on some good matches now. Gone yeah. to the days of him maybe just doing a hip toss and then, you know, and it's a few other moves and then bam, 619, it's done. Yeah. He's actually got a move set now. I, I even think sometimes when you watch his match, he's calling a few spots now, yep. which means they WWE definitely bloody trust you if that's happening. And yep. you, whoever you're working with trusts you. Um, yeah, you know, he's never going to win on NXT, but it was an absolute <laughs> banger. A re- great match. I loved it. Yeah, me too. Uh, the end, and everyone started getting involved. Uh, yeah, the world did his wife come out at the end. Trick Williams, had a, oh, he was he was everyone's... Uh, he was everyone's envy this week after mm-hmm. carrying Rhea Ripley for a little bit. Um, then uh, Blunt, uh, LA Knight hits Blunt Force Trauma on JD McDonough, throws him out the ring. Uh, and that leads to basically Elijah Dragunov picking up the victory. But then Baron Corbin appears on the stage. And as he appears on the stage behind him, Dijak, who used to be one of the Retribution guys, who was Dominic Dijakovic back in NXT previously, it's drops Dragunov. Mm. Um, and that basically, Dragonov is his next target. So that's, I think that's going to be great, by the way. Yeah, I think that's just going to be setting up uh, either a freeway with Corbin or Halloween Havoc, or they've got their pay per view coming up at the first weekend in December. Roadblock in it or something? Yeah, like Roadblock. I think December the, I want to say ninth, something like that. Yeah, I think it's either the second or the ninth. I know it's right at the start of December. So that's going to be setting up. So you've got you need two months build for their next pay per view. <laughs> I like that as well. That AEW do it really well. And I think NXT <laughs> do that really well. They don't give us a pay-per-view once a month, leave that to the, we call it quote unquote, the main brand, leave that to yeah. Raw and SmackDown. And I, when NXT do put on the show, because it's been such a good build and it seems to be like a month or even like for this case, it's going to be a two month build. By the time the pay-per-view comes around, you're like, yep, yeah, I'm ready for this. And they never really, uh, touch wood, they don't usually let us down with the uh, NXT pay-per-views. No, they don't. And I think what they do is a bit like AW's where they put on special shows. Halloween have a great American bash. Yeah. AW do winter is coming, fight a fest, fight of the fallen, and things like that. So they do put the nice little shows on here and there. But mm. yeah, pay-per-view every couple of months works. I'm I'm a fan of that. Um then a quite interesting bit here was Trick Williams, uh Carmelo Hayes and John Cena in a locker room. They had the hug. There was a little bit of dissension and a little bit of animosity between Hayes and Williams. And then when when Hayes left, William said to Cena, when did he know that it was his time? And at that point, Cena says, let's have a private discussion. Mm. Are we going to see Trick turn on Hayes? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I called it. I said last week. I think it's going to happen. Um, it's just when, how, where. I think it'll be Halloween Havoc now. Um, yeah. so I think night one, Halloween Havoc, he turns. I think, I think that's where it's going. I think it's. I think that'll be a good storyline as well. Uh, yeah. I think it'll really be good to see him as a heel and yeah. obviously up against Trick and see what happens. But yeah, I mean, could we see Cena more on NXT a little bit? You don't know, do you? You never know. Who knows? That is what we don't know. Um, then you mentioned this on the Raw review. Paul Heyman was having a conversation uh, with somebody. Uh, he was showing her the Blitz bloodline and you're thinking, who's this? And it was Ava, a.k.a. The Rock's daughter, Simone uh, Johnson. Mm-hmm. Is she going to go into the bloodline, do you think? It, that would be... what. Um, if they do that, it'll be... What a great way. We all know that The Rock's coming back for a little a little while probably rumble mania if uh, elimination chamber i'm going to guess because it's in australia it's going to be a fucking humongous pay-per-view i'm pretty sure the rock so we're saying for argument's sake we're going to get in three or four months what a way to get that storyline up and running if you get the you could do the whole like remember when daniel bryan uh had the whole bray wyatt thing going on and the brainwash storyline and everything like that what a way that would be to get her in the bloodline and schmooze her and get her in with Rome, Uncle Roman and all this and the yeah. whole family thing and everything be perfect. And then they could be in the ring. You haven't seen The Rock for a couple of meets. All of a sudden, if you smell the Rock's music hits, the fucking place goes bananas. I lose my shit at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, <laughs> it'll be, I think, yeah, perfect. If that's the way they're going, it's, and that's what they've teased now. And that's why I think will be good. And that's why I think... I was a bit sceptical of some of these appearances on NXT. Don't be surprised now if you see Heyman again. I think they do like I said to you on the Raw Review, and I said this on when we spoke about it. I think we spoke SmackDown last week. Um, I think WWE are looking to do this more now. They've gone to the days of Raw being the main show, SmackDown, and then NXT. I think now it's all we say all the time. Back in the day, you used to have you used to have to watch Raw, which led into SmackDown, which led into pay-per-views. Now you've got to watch Raw, which leads into NXT, which leads into SmackDown, which leads into pay-per-views. So I like where they're going with that. So potentially you could be seeing Mr. Paul Heyman again on NXT because there was big rumours that the Rock's daughter had been let go and she'd been released and yada, yada, yada. Well, she's out of the schism. Yeah, she's out of the schism of, yeah, that's done. And everyone was like, well, she's finished with wrestling and she's not in WWE anymore. Well, hello. Perfect. What a move. If they, that is the move they're going down. I love it. Yeah, great move if it happens. We hope it does. Um, Jay Cardgill putting in the miles this week. comes Her out Uber driver's been busy. Yeah, he must be in a packet. I, did a tip, um, you know. I thought you said something else. <laughs> uh, Jay Cargill. Um, I mean, she comes out in little or nothing, um, pretty much. Yeah, um, they're, they're teasing it. They're te- I'll give them their dues. They're teasing it. <laughs> but the, 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 the whole element of surprise for me, that's the only thing I don't fucking like about that when they do this kind of thing. Because you're like, all right. Like I said to you on the Raw review, I thought she was going to run out and do a run in yes, on Raw. Point, yeah. When is she now going to debut? Because I said to you, it ain't going to be Saudi Arabia. I'd be shocked if it's Saudi Arabia. Yeah, not, 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 not be Saudi. Not do we still see it being Raw then? Because she didn't really do much on NXT. She, you know, We've got quite a long way to Survivor Series, have we not? When's Survivor, yeah, Survivor Series? Survivor Series is not till November. I know that. I'm just trying to think when. Midland? Middle to end? It's time to look at Google quickly. I'll you go and Google. I'll sing a song or something. But yeah, um... <laughs> I still, yeah, I think she'll debut on... Jesus, the end of November. It's 25th yeah, of November. 25th of November. So we've got Saudi Arabia in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, and then that's Oh, it. yeah, that's a pay-per-view, isn't it? Saudi Good Arabia's in us. two weeks. But yeah, I can't see her debut in there. So it's oh. either going to be... I, I still think it'll be something to do with Bear. Becky season Lynch. premiere or Raw, maybe. Could be. That could be the one. Season premiere or Raw. We said when we were chatting Raw... Um, this week that we, it's always something it's like the past it's been Austin you know they've had so many people on the season it's always been big Smackdown's just your traditional Roman Reigns is returning I think he's returned every premiere for the last god knows how many years Roman Reigns is like in honestly um, but yeah it could be could be Raw but again yeah she was she was on NXT they're teasing it well uh, and again I, I was reading something online um, mm. he says you can already tell that WWE are making her into a superstar the way she's been packaged don't know if you you watch a lot more AW than I did back in the day. Is she coming across already as more of a I don't want to say superstar because that sounds fucking degrading to you know she's a wrestler, but do you think she's coming across better already being packaged in WWE than she was in AW? Because I, I didn't watch a lot of her in AW, so I can't really comment. 
I didn't really see too much because she was on Rampage. I don't watch Rampage. Um, so um, I think what the, they're just making her into this big star. So I don't think it will be long before she, 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 even if she's not there already, it won't be long before she is taken over what she's on, on on AEW. But it, she looks like a million dollars. Michael's, you know, you look like, do you know who Michael reminds me of? <laughs> I said this to Fiona yesterday with that stupid hair. Do you remember oh. old man Marley from Home Alone? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he ended up being a good dude. Just thinking he's a source. But anyway, she escorts. But I, I think she will be a bigger star in WWE. I think WWE suits her. I think we said this before. WWE suits her better, really, because it's a lot about the character as well as it is in ring. And she's got a great presence. About her. As I said before, she was Vincent Mann's wet dream, uh, in my opinion. And, well, she's a lot of people's wet dreams. But bottom line is Vincent Mann, you know, we know what he likes in his men. <laughs> and now it's pretty much the same in the women. But um, we, we'll move on from that quite quickly. I yeah, before that. we get kicked off YouTube. Um, Cody Rhodes was backstage and he said to Baron Corbin he'll get his shot at the NXT Championship if he can win the triple threat match next week against Dijak and the winner of tonight's main event of Braun Breaker and Carmelo Hayes. Mm -hmm. Um, Dominic Mysterio had a confrontation backstage with Nathan Fraser, so I'm taking that setting up another North American title match. Uh, Then we had the women's uh, breakout tournament in the uh, first round. It was Lola Vice and Danny Palmer. Um, Decent enough match. A little bit it was all right, but you have to again. You have to take these breakout matches with a pinch of salt and not expect him to be exactly Tristash versus Leah. You know what I mean? Prime time, yeah. um, in their prime, should I say? But yeah, it's good, mate. I I like the fact that they're doing this. I like the fact that they've announced the men's breakout tournament. You've got the mm-hmm. Dusty Rose tag team coming up. Yeah. Again, it, it's still developing your brand. It's still developing your product, and it and it's live on TV. You're learning on the fly. You're literally you're not uh, you're not you know performing in front of 2,000 people on some fucking like, two-bob show in the middle of America where no one ever gets to see you. No, I'm not talking about AEW. Um, <laughs> Dave's going to kill me for that. Dave, it's a joke, Dave. Dave, I'm joking. I'm joking, Dave. I hope you're well. I hope your little boy's well. Um, but, um, yeah, it's good. They're learning on the fly. And that's what yeah. the breakout... The, you look at some of the women that have come out of the breakout tournament in the past, you know. Um, it's been really good for... for the, this one... It was okay. It, it probably got a bigger audience than it normally would because they probably had more eyes on the product. So what a perfect WWE aren't stupid. What a good time to know that they started this breakout tournament last week and then they knew that the all eyes were going to be on NXT this weekend, uh, this Tuesday. So yeah, it was it was good for what it was, mate. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was decent enough. Um, Chase Chase University vignette happened with JC Jane getting involved a little bit. Backstage, Braun Breaker was giving, uh, Paul Heyman was giving Braun Breaker some encouragement. He's worked with his father and his uncle. He knows that Breaker's the future and be WrestleMania main eventer. But the only thing standing in his way is Carmelo Hayes. And Breaker was like, he doesn't care. He's going to break them all. Um, Tiffany Stratton introduces herself to Asuka, interestingly uh, enough, and poked fun at Fallon uh, Henley. Then we had the television screen come up. And we heard the words, every time I meet someone, they talk how, about how great my father was, if I have any fond memories of him. Don't have any memories of my father. He passed away when I was four. I tried everything I could not to become a WWE superstar. I was going to make a really bad joke then, but I'm not going to, uh, about what AEW, but I'm not going to do that. Even played college football. The industry has been in my blood. He could never escape it. I've got no choice but embrace it. I've chosen to inflict pain on the business that has brought me so much grief. But when they see this face, I don't want them to think about my dead father. I want to think about me. I am nobody's junior, get the hint. And from this day forward, I'm going to take on the last name of my real man that raised me. And his name was King. Brian Pilmer Jr. is called Lexis King in NXT. Now, there is a side story. I think one of them was his daughter, uh, sister that passed away. I was only going the lines. That's why Lexis is involved. But I think in that one promo, I take him more seriously than I ever did in AW. I liked the promo. The drawn on beard kept putting me off. <laughs> yeah, that was... <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like I just said to my 11-year-old daughter, hey, hello, do you want to come and do some colouring on that? Yeah, but yeah, you are right. I think it's going to be good how they've already... Yeah, they're already... Again, we say the same about Jay Cargill. We're now saying the same about uh, Brian Pilmer Jr., King, um, I think they're going to use him well. Where's he going to slot in straight away? Be interesting storyline wise, but mm-hmm. again, if, if like you said, we might get some call ups in the next couple of weeks, so he's going to yeah. slot in somewhere. 
where does he slot in? Obviously, he's going to he's coming in as a singles guy. So I don't know where he who who would you think I don't know who his first feud would be with um you know I think they're going to put him in the mix um going to be Dominic Mysterio I don't think he's going to be in the NXT world title shot straight it's going to be interesting to see what they do with him so we say but yes I agree with you I think WWE have packaged him way better than AEW ever could barring the beard Barring the stupid coloured on beard, it kept, it kept putting me on. I was looking, watching the promo, thinking, "This is really good." It took me a few seconds because I was watching it at work, had it on my phone. I was like, "Is my f- something wrong with my phone?" And I was like, "The fuck is wrong with?" Oh no, they've drawn and beard on. But uh, yeah, no, interesting to see what they do with him now, and I've, we'll probably see him next week on NXT. May well be. Uh, now it's time for main event. So we got to the end. Uh, Carmelo Hayes, Braun Breaker, put on an absolute brilliant match. Um, these two, uh, but we couldn't have it without a bloodline interference, could we? No, just as Cena snatches the stairs away from Breaker, Solo Sokoa starts. Uh, Hayes hits the code breaker, Hayes connects with the nothing but net to pick up the victory. Then Braun Breaker spears him and says, There is no bad ass left in the WWE other than him. And you don't say that in wrestling. It was like when Elias said, the next person that interrupts me is a dead man. Mm, you know where I'm going with this. The gong hits. The crowd goes ape shit. The lights go off. You can hear the bike revving up in the background. Kid Rock plays on the music. and out. Baron Corbin comes out. No. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say Uncle Adam. But, <laughs> but out comes Mr. Dead Man himself, Mr. American Badass himself, The Undertaker, um, to basically walk straight up to him and say, Basically, long way, long, long way, long story short is you need to learn respect. Breaker said, don't care. Uh, he punches the Undertaker, which was what a stupid fucking thing to do. Uh, and then he got a hellacious choke slam. I must say that was probably one of Undertaker's best choke slams in years. My concern is probably the same as yours. You just had a 60 odd year old guy bury the biggest talent in NXT. This, this is probably, and then people might be shocked like this because they know I absolutely fucking love the WWE. This, for me, was stupid. Mm. I love seeing The Undertaker. Anytime I get to see him, he's good. This, though, fucking buried from break. They buried him. Absolutely buried him. If I was booking it, what I would have done to get some more heat, get some you know, ratings is probably the fucking wrong word because you're already having a lot of people on. He was already had the eyes. It was at the end of the show. I would have had Braun Breaker. I would have had him go over. I would have had him hit his finisher on the Undertaker. And that's how you go off the air with the Undertaker laying down, Breaker laying over him. You could have had then, obviously, Carmelo come and interfere and they could have had a little face off, yada, yada, yada. Show goes off the air. But instead, it goes off the air with the, you know, the Undertaker hitting the choke slam. And we've seen it a thousand times before. And don't get me wrong, I lie. Anytime you get to see the dead man, is a good time. But for me, this was no, nah, this was wrong. You you've just buried one of your biggest stars. Unless he is getting called up now, and that's it. He's done with NXT. He's out of here. He's going to roar. He's going to smack down wherever he's going. Then okay, they might get a hall pass for that one. But for me, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't like the end. I liked seeing the Undertaker, but I didn't like the way that WWE booked that. I would have had it, but I would have had it the other way around, and we'll kind of call it a passing of the torch, shall we say? With Taker going, I'll do, I'll do the over here. I'll do the job. I mean, I'll take a bump, I'll lay down, like you know. But, yeah, I don't know what you think, mate. I thought they got the ending of it wrong. I just think, you know, as I said, Huntaker's 60 odd years old. Yeah. He's just choke slammed the, you know, your biggest star to a degree. The biggest heel in your in NXT at and the minute. The one, you know that the people that are looking to be called up are simple. Like, you look at it, you can see that Carmelo Hayes, Trick Williams, and the un- Tiffany Stratton and Braun Breaker are the four. Oh, when you yeah. said people were getting called up because they're simple, I thought we were talking up, calling up all the AW fans. Fucking hell. Jesus Christ. There's no war here, Andy. <laughs> sorry, sorry. My bad. No war everybody. here. My bad. Don't, don't fall bad. into the stupidity <laughs> of Twitter. Okay. Um, Joke. Yeah, long story short, is I think I know who the four are. If you're going to call four up, I think I know who they are. I've just said them. Hayes, Williams, mm. Stratton, Breaker. Yeah. And then yes. obviously, like you say, you can bring in... That's why I think they might bring in Cargill, Pillman, yeah. You can and, and, and maybe another Oscar could still again appear on NXT TV more. I think this is where it's good now because gone are the days of are oh, they caught up and gone. Who's to say that it doesn't, you know, 
you, they all advertise on SmackDown where you better watch NXT next week or Raw when they're halfway through. Oh, tomorrow night on NXT, is, I'll see you there and so and so. It, gone are the days now of, oh, well, they're only on Raw, they're only on SmackDown because that went out the window about God, a couple of months ago now when Baron Corbin yeah. and, you know, all of them, Mustafa Ali reappeared on NXT. Yeah, free agents. And, free agents and everything like that. So I think, yeah, if he gets called up, I let them pass the ending, but yeah, I didn't like it. I thought it was shit. I really thought it should have been the other way around, and the Undertaker should have taken a bump. And or the Corbin could have come out, and then Undertaker could have done Corbin. You could, yeah, you could have done anything that your biggest heel doesn't get buried live on TV. Yeah, and for what purpose, really? A rate. Let's be honest, that was purely ratings at the end there. Of it Take it, you know. That's that didn't that didn't uh, move on any kind of storyline. That didn't do, you know. There was nothing previous that we. But like you say, soon as he said, "I'm the baddest, uh, I'm the baddest man or baddest house in or bad house in W," we all knew what was happening because the main event was over. I looked, I clicked my phone. I was like, mm, eight minutes left of the show. Takers coming up. Yeah, uh, poor yeah. move from WWE. I thought, I don't get me wrong. Get what you're doing here, but do it in a way that you don't bury the talent that you've got there and take it for me. He's one of them. Oh, he's an old school guy. I, I don't reckon he would had any objection if they said to him, Sean Michael said to him, we want you to do this. I really think take would have said no. Probably not. I can't but... I think he would have made, but yeah, I don't know. But yeah, uh, let's give NXT a, a, a rating out of 10. For me, I'm going to give it a solid eight purely because of the ending. It would have been higher, but I thought they ruined. I thought the ending was a bit of a clusterfuck. Well, they could have just gone back. They could have done a take her out off air. They could have just gone that dark. Gone. Yeah, I mean, the digital exclusive was him and Hayes were uh, doing the whole yeah. arm, the take a look. And, yeah, they could have done something. Mate. But yeah, uh, eight, eight for me, mate. I really, um, again, I, it's my favourite show again. Uh, all, I've watched Raw, I've watched NXT, you know, AEW. For me, NXT so far has been the show of the week. Yeah, I'll give it, eight. I think I gave Raw an eight as well. Um, but I think you gave Raw an 8.5, by the way. Or nine, you gave Raw a nine. I gave Raw a nine. I thought Raw was brilliant. Yeah, um, I, I, I loved NXT recently. Yeah, NXT's been great. I guess I'm going to give it, and I'm going to put it on par with Raw. I'm going to give it an eight. Uh, I actually okay. gave AEW. I uh, knocked a half a point off of AEW for because of the uh, Jewish thing they done uh, this week. That was so fucking bad, dude. Uh, I saw it, mate. Yeah, you taste. don't do that, especially. I know you've got a lot of eyes on your product that evening. That was fucking horrendous. Yeah, fucking I, didn't, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I'll, uh, so I'll keep that. I, I didn't give yeah. it a score actually. So I'm going to give AEW got seven point five. They would have got an eight eight point five if it weren't for that angle. Because it was really it left a bad taste in my mouth for the rest of the show. To be honest, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people saw on social media. Yeah, NXT yeah, it was a coin thing. Uh, to it for a Jewish guy to get a load of coins, threatened to be put with him or had a prove his name on it. So, mm-hmm. but anyway, yeah, NXT for an eight for me as well. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Wasn't it a bit like you? Wasn't a fan of the end uh, with the Undertaker bit. Love seeing him, but as you say, choke slamming your biggest star that you've got the biggest hope for probably ain't the best way to do it. It's just like when Cena destroyed Austin Fury on the on the mic; he never recovered from it. So, mm. yeah, well, look what fucking Austin Fury is doing now. Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Um. Yeah. I. Yeah. I. But let's. Can we now put to bed this whole NX? Who? Who? In your opinion? Come on. Everyone's gonna. I know people who tweeted. Who won the war? Wrestling fans. Um. Officially, NXT did. But really, yeah. does it matter? Do you think it matters? No. I don't no. really care. I. Mean, I, I just like the fact that there was wrestling on, and they gave. You could tell both of them were trying to do. You know, they were trying to one up each other, which is. I don't mind that one up. Then ships fine. But as MJF said, all they're doing is counting the fucking money. So. They're all laughing about it. You know, you've probably got the rest of don't give a shit. Cody and people like that. And as MJF said on the interview, like, they're not at war. They love it. This, this, this is, you know, they're earning mega money out of it. And there's always going to be work available for these wrestlers. You know what I mean? That's the bottom line. Again, no pun intended. But um, they're, they're always going to be places. And the good thing is now, there's always going to be places for them to work. You know what I mean? And you've got, like you say, you, you talk NWA um, with Fiona. You've got Impact doing really well so yeah gonna be interesting mate but yeah i i, I just enjoyed all wrestling mate and we've still got some to go we still ain't got smackdown yet yeah we've still got a few bits to go we've got smackdown we've got collision there's no pay-per-view this week which is kind of nice to give a little break from uh mm-hmm. we haven't got to get up at six o'clock on sunday morning and watch a pay-per-view which is no good. the next one we're going to probably be doing live yes yeah, saudi arabia we're probably going to be live on our, YouTube wait, channel. our boy our followers want it to happen man yeah, so uh, we'll be live uh, talking, watching some Saudi. WWE. How are we going to do that and be live doing that? That's going to be... Know. We have my phone right here watching it. In my I don't know how we... I, I've got to work out how to do it yet. <laughs> I'll figure it out, mate. You're a smart guy. 
Ask Rachel. <laughs> yeah. Who's Rachel? Now. Ask Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Rachel? <laughs> Uh-huh. Who, only falls and horses reference there. Yeah, you get one in the podcast. You know, yeah, listen in the states. You won't go, go and go and have a Google of only falls and horses. Greatest British program ever. But uh, it's good to talk some NXT again. Uh, myself and Adam will be back at the weekend reviewing WWE SmackDown. The AW guys will probably be back as well. We've got Collision. We've got Rampage. Uh, Dave is still changing nappies. Parker is busy working. Uh, time zones, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But. Uh, the boys will be back talking AEW, so you don't have to listen to poor old Adam doing his Well, tight. it might well be me with one of the boys. Is it? Are we start with you on my screen again? Okay. I reckon don't so. Don't make me watch AEW, just so I've got to come with I'm joking, Dave, before you come at me again. Yeah, you're, um, you're pushing boundaries tonight. No, I know. To be fair, no, a, to be fair, AEW done really well this week. Dynamite was a fucking solid, solid show, mate. Uh, AEW, WWE. All knocked it out of the park. I mean, if that's what it takes to get everyone to fucking perform at that level, then both put them both on Tuesday nights and let them go. It'd be great. Yeah. Like we said last week, not you don't really watch wrestling live anymore anyway. So let's see what happens. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed our NXT review. Like I say, we'll be back at myself and Adam will definitely be back at the weekend talking SmackDown. Uh, I'm off to I'm off to see some UK shows this weekend. So keep an eye on our socials. I'll be tweeting that out um, Saturday and Sunday. I'm out and about. Um, as always, you can find us on Twitter at HTT Buckle on YouTube. Just type in the Hit and the Turnbuckle podcast on Instagram, on TikTok. I do believe Adam's doing something called Threads. I ain't got a fucking clue what that is. Uh, check us out on there. But till next time, everybody, this has been the Hit and the Turnbuckle podcast. I've been your host, Andy Burrows, with my good friend and tag team partner, Mr. Adam Cousins. Till next time, everybody, buckle down, stay safe.